So in class we're going to start looking at some children's picture books um, because we're looking at children's language development for our English language A level um, and I thought we'd start by looking at this book Who Am I by Judith Nichols which is one of my favourite children's picture books um, and we're just going to sort of pick out a few things from it that I think are interesting. I'd like you to then to try and spot those kind of things in uh, the books that you're looking at. Let's start reading it. George was sad. He couldn't jump. He couldn't jiggle. He couldn't run. He couldn't wriggle. All he could do was dream, drifting by the weeds in the dark, dark pond. The first thing I think we could pick out is that first sh really short, simple sentence, George was sad. And often you'll find in children's picture books that the first sentence or even the first few sentences are short, simple sentences. And what that does, I think, is it kind of eases the child in, you know, something really short and simple to start with so that they don't feel um, that this is going to be too difficult to grasp right from the outset. And we then launch into some some much longer sentences. And actually, this the one of the things I really love about this book is that it's really playful with language. So look at the kind of um, the kind of techniques that are used. You've got jump and jiggle. You've got alliter alliteration there, haven't you? Then run and wriggle, more alliteration. Um, and then obviously jiggle and wriggle. You've got the rhyme, haven't you? There's some ellipsis, isn't there, at the end of that um, first page. All he could do was dot, 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 dream. Drifting by the weeds in the dark, dark pond. Obviously more alliteration with the dot sound there as well, isn't there? Um, it's really emotionally engaging as well, isn't it? Um, on a, just a very basic level, you know, even a young child as young as kind of two, three, um, it's going to be familiar with the idea of being sad. And so you can see George here looking really sad and the child is able to sort of relate to that and think, oh dear, poor George. So it's kind of like emotionally engaging the child right from the outset, isn't it? Um, the ellipsis is really interesting as well um, in that one of the things when a, a, you, a, a, you're introducing a child to books that you want to teach them is well, what on earth do you do with this book? You know, you've got this bit of card and paper in front of you. What do you do? Where do you start? Which direction do you go? How do you turn the pages? How do you look at it? How do you read it? Um, it's, it's likely that when a child first encounters this book, it's probably going to be read to them by an adult. Um, but then gradually they might then start to read it themselves. And it's just this idea of, well, OK, we started in that top left hand corner um, and then we're we're reading the words that are on the first page. And then dot, 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 we've got the ellipsis and that takes us over to the page on the right. So it's kind of like showing us, oh, we're not there yet. Let's move over to the right now to carry on reading the story. And sometimes illustrations do that as well. Um, you know that what whatever the illustration is on the on the left hand side will lead you on to something that's on the right, or something that's on the right hand side will um, tempt you to want to turn the page to find out how that's going to be resolved in the next page. So that it's kind of like that that top to bottom, left to right, turning the page over, going from front to back, kind of sequencing, if you like. Which actually, you know, you might, you know, if you've been reading since you were a child, you just kind of take that for granted. Um, but actually a child has got to learn that, that physical process of what you actually do with the book. Um, let's carry on. Who am I? He asked the water boatman. The water boatman was far too busy to stop. He stared crossly. Who are you? You're a dot, you're a spot, you're a jelly belly tot, you're an inky pinky blot in the dark, dark pond. Um, one of the things that you'll notice about this book, and you will see this at sort of various points, is that um, it's quite educational. So you'll notice that a lot of children's books, as well as having, um, you know, the purpose to entertain and to narrate and to describe, they're also serving this um, this educational purpose. And in this case, it's the idea of a, a tadpole turning into a frog, isn't it? But even li li other little things as well. Like I, I had no idea what you call one of those little creatures beforehand. It was actually it was reading this book first for the first time, I don't know, like about sort of 10, 15 years ago, that I learned what a water boatman was. So even as an adult, I was learning something from this book. And there were just a couple of little references to fish and so on um, that is introducing the child to. So they're actually learning something about the world around them from the book that they're reading. Um, the The facial expressions on some of the the fish and the creatures and so on are interesting as well. Obviously, we had George looking sad and looking worried. Here we've got the water boatman staring crossly, haven't we? And so it's kind of um, 
beginning to introduce the child to you know to paralinguistic features to facial expressions and body language and and how that reveals something about um uh, you know the way in which someone is communicating uh, and i think as an adult as well or a caregiver whoever it is that's actually reading the book to the child and this is likely to be a book that an adult would read to a child first as i say you know they maybe sort of somewhere between ages two to six maybe seven maybe and then at around kind of like age seven ish six seven maybe the child might then pick it up on them by themselves and read it to themselves perhaps particularly if they're familiar with a lot of it so they can follow the words um but the reason i was saying that is that um uh you know think about how an adult will deliver it um, and so what the child is doing here is that they're seeing the water boatman looking cross and then they're hearing the adult read those lines. Who are you? You're a dot, you're a spot, you're a jelly belly tot, you're an inky pinky blot in the dark, dark pond. And the adult will probably say it in kind of quite a, quite a cross, dismissive kind of tone of voice. So they're actually linking the, uh, the paralinguistic features of the, the facial expressions of the, the water boatman with the prosodic features of the way that an adult will probably deliver it. And in that sense, there's text image cohesion. You've got the, um, the language of the text linking in with the picture in various ways, haven't you? And look at how the writer has actually created that kind of quite cross, angry tone as well. And it's the plosives that do that, the, the rhyme with the plosives. You're a dot, you're a spot, you're a jelly belly tot, you're an inky pinky blot in the dark, dark pond. Listen to all the tup -tup 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 kind of sounds. Dot, spot, tot, inky pinky blot, dark, dark pond. And so all the plosives kind of just sort of create this kind of quite spiteful cross kind of tone of voice, don't they there? The water boatman kicked his legs proudly and darted away through the weedy water. George was sad. He couldn't dart, he couldn't hop, he couldn't start, he couldn't stop. All he could do was dream, drifting by the weeds in the dark, dark pond. And um, One of the things that I pick out here is um, just how playful a lot of this is in terms of language. Um, so if we turn back, you know, you've got all these words like jelly belly. Um, you know, these neologisms that are just completely made up by the writer. Um, a lot of them are kind of quite diminutive in terms of form. You know, that diminutive form is like um, like a mummy and a doggy kind of word. Do you know what I mean? Um, uh, and you've got jelly, belly, inky, pinky. Um, so they're, they're playful, made up words that are diminutive. Um, and this idea of uh, playing around with words, using alliteration, rhyme and and you know making up words and playing around with language this is i think something that you know the best children's picture books will have um some really good stuff written by david crystal various articles and lectures and so on all about the the importance of ludic language in ch in in books aimed at children um uh, I'll, I'll try and give a link to an article i was reading by him the other day called loving linguistic lucidity and in that he says it is the very lack of lucidity in many reading materials which explains why the progress of so many children towards literacy and advanced language skills has been slow. And I suspect Crystal would love this book because there's certainly no lack of linguistic lucidity here. Um, and it's, you know, exactly the kind of book that would, um, you know, captivate a child, but also, um, you know, introduce them to so much in terms of various language techniques and so on and there's lots so much description as well you know and, and 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 lexical choice you know drifting by the weeds in the dark dark pond lots of you know specific choices of verb and some adjectives and adverbs like proudly um you know the lexical choices like darted away through the weedy water yeah it's 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 very very descriptive and lots of very conscious lexical choices going on who am I? he asked the stickleback. The stickleback wriggled closer, then she giggled. Who are you? You're a dot, you're a spot, you're a jelly belly tot, you're an inky pinky blot in the dark, dark pond. Lots of repetition. It's another reason why I love this book. It's um it's a bit like if you think of like some of the best children's picture books and fairy tales and so on. Think if I say fee, fi, fo, fum, then you fill in you know, you carry on with I smell the blood of an Englishman, don't you? Or 
run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. We all have uh, stories, fairy tales, nursery rhymes, things, you know, where we there are bits that uh, where a, a, an adult, a teacher, a caregiver or whatever has as as read us that story over and over and over and over again and there are bits therefore as a child that we learn to join in on um and these are some of those bits i think where you, because it's repeated three four times during the course of the story you get to know that bit off by heart and you anticipate it and you the, the child over time will then maybe start to join in with it or at least have this real sense of familiarity when that bit comes up the stickleback flicked her tail proudly and danced away through the weedy water George waited sadly. He couldn't dance, he couldn't kick, he couldn't glide, he couldn't flick. But each day he grew just a little bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think the comparatives are quite interesting here. Um, one of the theorists that we, we started looking at is Piaget, isn't he? Jean Piaget. And uh, Piaget talks about these different stages of cognitive development in the child. Um, between the ages of roughly two to seven, um, he calls that the pre-operational stage. Um, and then from seven onwards, that's called the concrete operational stage. And it will be, bet you know, bet gradually between the ages of two to seven that the child will start to learn something about the principle of size. Um, the idea of one thing being bigger or smaller than something else or, you know, one pile of things being um, uh, you know, there being more of one quantity of something than another. Um, at at the, the lower end of that stage, that pre-operational stage, at the age age two, age three maybe, um, a child won't grasp things with the same logic that an adult would. Um, so if you had a biscuit and um, you cut it into two um, and offered the child either one single biscuit or the two halves of one biscuit, they would probably go for the two halves because in their mind they'd think, well, it's two biscuits. They wouldn't be able to grasp this idea it was exactly the same as the one biscuit, which is just broken into two now. Um, in their mind, that would be more. Um, another example I was reading about the other day was like if you had a, like a lump of clay for a child to play with and you had it in a sort of tight ball um, or if you squashed it flat so that it looked bigger, the child would be far more likely to go for the the flat squashed piece of clay because they think oh that's huge and so you know at a really young age around sort of two three they sometimes find that principle of size difficult the closer they move towards the concrete operational stage at age seven the more they'll be able to grasp whether something is bigger or smaller or you know whatever in terms of comparatives than something else and so what this book is doing is kind of again through the text image cohesion um kind of guiding and coaching a child through that cognitive process of cognitive development if you see what I mean um, and you can see that if you look at the picture of George here you've got a small picture of George at the top and then he's getting bigger and bigger and actually typographically remember typography is anything to do with font and print you can see that you've got even the word bigger and bigger and bigger so typographically that's getting bigger as well so lots of text image uh, cohesion, which is linking to, to, to what the, the, the writer is perhaps trying to guide the child through in terms of their cognitive development and understanding of size. One day the stickleback wriggled past again. Fiddle my fins, fiddle my fins, you're getting fat. And fiddle my fiddle diddle fins, just what do you think is that? George looked behind to find a... Notice the ellipsis again, it's coaxing us to read on to the next page isn't it a tail he waved it he wiggled it he flicked it he jiggled it now who am i he asked in excitement pooh i've already told you that said the stickleback rudely you're a dot you're a spot you're a jelly belly tot you're an inky pinky blot in the dark dark pond i'm not cried george i'm not i'm not i'm not and this time to his surprise he darted forward the stickleback wriggled off in alarm each day, George grew bigger and bigger and bigger. And one day, the water boatman darted by again. When he saw George this time, he stopped and stared. He looked puzzled. What's this? You're not a dot or a spot. You're not a jelly belly tot any longer. George looked behind to find... 
legs. He looked, he kicked, he licked his lips. The water boatman darted off in alarm. George kicked again. He landed rather breathlessly on a slithery sunny rock by the edge of the dark, dark pond. He stared around, then he smiled and blinked happily. I can do it. I can dance, I can kick, I can glide, I can flick, I can jump, I can jiggle, I can race, I can wriggle, I can swim, I can hop, I can jelly belly flop, I can leap to a leaf, I can dive to a log, I can slide, I can hide, I am me, I am frog. Um, and it's a brilliant ending, isn't it? Um, and uh, I think the, the other thing I think I would say about this is kind of, you know, what, what's happening on a pragmatic level. Uh, you know, what is the child learning about? themselves or about development about identity about self-image and so on uh through the narrative and i think um to me it's almost like a like an ugly duckling kind of story isn't it it's to do with you know at the beginning george is really sad but he learns to kind of overcome other people's negative labeling of him and sometimes he just needs to wait and wait and learn to recognize that actually his own potential will become evident eventually. Um, so it's kind of, almost kind of like teaching a child a degree of resilience in that sense, perhaps. So when you're having a look at a children's picture book, see if you can find those kind of things. You know, what's going on? What's, what's the writer trying to do? How might an adult interact with a child when they're reading it? And see what kind of things that you can spot in terms of the, the language techniques and try and look at things uh, using a range of different methods or frameworks. So try and look at pragmatics and grammar and lexis and phonology and try and think of the, the range of different ways in which you could analyse this text and explore it.